Hello everyone, Master Zeno 101 here, and in this video I wanted to do a topological study, kind of doubling back to the inset, which was the first topic I was talking about with the spherical um, help that I was providing previously. So with our cube, we're going to look at it in front view, and I'm just going to tab into edit mode, grab this single front edge, and I'm just going to bevel it till we get a nice big bevel. All right, so with this edge selected, we'll go into front mode, rotate the view a couple of times using numpad 2. I'll press D, draw a box, press B to bevel, and we'll just roll that up a couple of times. Uh, keep in mind that I'm determined to put this curvature on the curvature of this box in order to make this as painful as possible. So now we have created this shape, this roundy round on round town on a planar shape. So this is an interesting type of topological conundrum. So this one can best be solved with a little bit of bevel. First I shift clicked sharpen in order to get my auto smooth just right. In fact we can press Control A and make this geometry a mesh. However before that let's talk about the weld. So first I will draw a box. However before that let's choose the knife toggle in the top bar and we will just draw a box around it. And with that created we'll just fix our shading and go under modifier and add a weld. And with the weld, we can kind of scroll the wheel and just see weld just really eating the curvature. So weld can be good in some cases. In fact, shading wise, this would almost be acceptable. However, if we look at the wire, we've lost a pretty good deal of our integrity and the continuity of what we were going for with this cut was kind of taken away. So let's talk about an easier way. So we will just control A, make geometry real. And the first thing we'll do is sharpen it. In my case, I have my sharpen option set to mark crease, mark seam, mark bevel weight, mark sharp, uh, as I typically do. And that has put a nice perimeter border aside from this one edge, which doesn't meet the angle threshold. So we'll just mark that manually. And now with this area kind of quarantined, I can just go into three and just select this area in face mode. By pressing I, I can inset this area and just kind of offset the uh, pain that I'm about to experience with this. And we can also do the same with the outside where we just, instead of selecting the whole outer boundary, we'll just select the inner area that we created with the knife previously in order to set us up for this. And we will just press I in order to offset that area as well. So now we've created this flowing area of topology just being continuity, having a continuity unlike the area previous, in fact, we see that we kind of broke it a little bit in this area, so let's actually try that again, and we'll go for something not so devastating. So now comes the area where we do just a little bit of solving, and for the purpose of this, I'll actually turn on auto merge, just for the people out there who wonder why I never use auto merge. So with this one, we will just deselect and just slide these in where they need to go. This one is a harder choice. However, due to the area that we've created, we can actually begin knife cutting to begin working our way around it. It's important to not double click or else you'll create a small double situation when using the knife. So we'll converge here and then we'll start the great merging process here. And we press enter. And while this looks a little skewed, it only looks skewed to the uninitiated. We press J here. We select this edge, create it for it in between, select these two, and now we have an area we can begin cleaning up. Just quick dissolve and we're done. So we continue moving and just looking at what we have, this area we can just start making some hard choices because we're already quarantined. This area is a bit of a harder choice, but we'll jump here. This area, hard choice, we'll jump here. Hard choice. However, it's a harder choice if you don't quarantine the area um, based on previous tests. Always run these through a couple of demos. Uh, shout out to the um, Extended Cut Gang. But I always. Um, like to experiment with different results whenever I'm doing the actual videos of these. So for this one, we'll just 
do a near connection instead of jumping it directly to the next one. In that case, we'll actually do the full jump. And we're just continuing to move around, just dealing with the most egregious areas that are just too close together to let live. So this area can be reworked. This area, I'm gonna make a revolutionary decision, actually slide it to its contemporary, which leaves us with this. So I press Alt-V and disable wireframe. And we can see that the that there's one area that was missed just right here. We'll just slide that in and we are done. So you see how right now, due to the way I modeled it, the sharpening information was kind of overwritten. Well, for that, there's actually a small Easter egg in sharpen called resharp. So let's go in object mode and let's press Q. And if we hover over sharpen, you can see the hotkey for control shift click to recalculate resharp. Resharp was a feature I wanted to add long ago in hops and now it finally exists as a part of the sharpen tool. So by control shift clicking it, you can basically recalculate the sharp information on the mesh, just remarking it the way it would be if you unmarked it and marked it again. So it's something I use every now and then, but every time I use it, I'm just glad it's there. So the next thing is we want to press Alt X and we'll use symmetry to mirror this to the other side. In fact, we press Control Z and we see what things looks like with just the inset without anything being treated. And then we see with it the result of us actually going in and just doing a little bit of work to just get things maintained. The other thing is that this area is taking away a lot of the perimeter. So I'm just going to slide that back up. Hopefully it will let me slide it. It's kind of a crazy set, but that should relax this area a little bit. I mean, we could solve this a little more efficiently by putting some edges in the middle and giving this some continuity. But generally for these things, um, it's not so important to me. Only if it's um, front, and, front and center as, as being problematic, then it's something that I'll generally go after. In fact, I could see a couple, and it's because you'll end up in these quandaries where you'll find yourself um, reworking an area and sometimes to um, less less result so it's important to um, you know choose your battles but we can see that that battle was able to improve it for the better so the next thing is I will just put a bevel on the mesh and I'll press one in order to just adjust the auto smoothing and we can see that now I get a nice smooth bevel in this area and that's really the point of today's video is to just talk about how you can actually use inset to kind of quarantine an area in order to get the spacing you need for your bevels to survive. So there is a reason that tools like Knifebox exist and such and that we uh, work the way that we do. I mean, the goal isn't to get a perfectly subdivision friendly mesh, but definitely to get a finely shaded result that at least doesn't show any um, mesh artifacting issues visually whenever you're looking at the mesh in the form of presentation. So just to um, extend this video because I was about to end it, um, we'll just press control one and put a level of subdivision. And we see that subdivision really breaks down the shape. And that's because even though we defined a bit, we didn't define enough. So I can, I have confidence that if I define this, this area will be solved. And if I define this, all of this area will be solved. And really it's only just the most minimal of geometry that it takes to really guide subdivision. But I tend, when it comes to dealing with subdivision, I am one to come in and at least specify every other edge just to give it a little bit of information to kind of guide it. In fact, now we see that subdiv is able to be more capable here. But if we press Alt X, we can mirror it to the other side. And this is actually something a little bit better. However, for the sides here, we actually lose a little bit of our definition. But if we press Alt V and turn it off, it really isn't nothing to be concerned about. But let's say that we did want to actually deal with that. Well, for that reason, I will go in my helper and we'll just turn off subdivision bevel visibility for now. And we'll press Alt V to turn on wireframe. And for this, what I want to do is go into bevel or actually control click bevel to add a new bevel. But instead we'll press three in order to add kind of this spacer bevel. And this bevel will just protect the perimeters. We can also see that it was inherited on the inside. So as we adjust it, we see that it doesn't make any change to shape. It just protects the perimeters of the angles. So the next thing that we can do is actually put a triangulate modifier on it. If you use it from our Q menu, we'll automatically set up triangulate to only deal with uh, ingons. So it won't 
triangulate any quad geometry. And so now we actually have this more perfectly set up. So let's collapse the modifiers and we see that we added a new bevel and a new triangulate. So let's move the subdivision down. And if we turn that on, we can see that that is our result. In fact, if we want to protect a perimeter more, we can just add a few more segments, but really um, our corners are pretty locked down. The other thing is that if we wanted to put subdivision on it, let's talk about that. Um, we can go after the first bevel and if we turn bevel back on, we can see that we're able to bevel. However, there's a good chance that we're going to bevel our, set, our first bevel that's protecting the perimeter. So by just bringing that in a little bit, we now have a nice rounded bevel on the outside. We have our perimeter protected. We have our ingons triangulated. And we have this kind of automatic process for us to continue working on without um, causing any issues. And so if we wanted to really force this to work with subdivision, we can do so just with a creative use of our modifier. So if I press Alt V, we can go back into wireframe. But as I always say, subdivision is a different type of auditor when compared to bevel. So when subdivision is involved, topological issues will definitely reflect on your surfacing. So there's a reason that you would want to choose either or instead of both, like I am in this situation. But hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight to uh, how we deal with modifiers, how to deal with topological issues, how to manage multiple levels of baffles, as you see here, how to um, stack your modifiers in order to get a very specific look if you're trying to get this out to 3D code or ZBrush. But most importantly, using insets in order to really space out things that you would normally be solving the hard way in order to solve it in a slightly easier way. So with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys there. Actually, before I do that, um, let's Alt-M, slap it with the blanky blank material. Let's go in render mode and see what we get for the blank material. And that one's a pretty good one. We'll press Q, add a blank camera. Let's really get this camera in here. It's floor S80. GZ minus one. Let's uh, also roll a blank material on the floor till we get one we like. We press Alt V V and just jump through um, different HDR environments that I have set up in my particular setup until we find one that we like. Turn off overlays, and this is what we're looking at so far. So we'll press Shift Spacebar to start rotating, but I want to give it I don't know 900 frames. So with that. We can press Alt V, go under blank light, really just roll through random light setups until we get an example that's worthy of showing. So with this shape, I probably still want to roll it through combinations, even at the end here, until I see something that I like. In fact, let's change this up to 9,000. For some reason, I like it when it rolls real slow. We could see the reflection kind of breaking due to the subdivision. In fact, uh, I keep wanting to roll the materials, but I always want to give a material that's flattering to the shading. So let's actually turn off this one, turn off that one, and also turn off the first bevel. And we see actually the intended result. However, we also see that, you know, shading is always going to be a bit of a struggle. So I can't wait to show in future videos how there's other add-ons out there that are able to uh, accelerate and ease this process at the expense of certain other rules being broken but I wanted to at least show um, topological understanding and modifier control as far as making these sort of things work out when it comes to bevel and subdivision and I hope that this has been something that's able to be informative to you the viewer and with that we can wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time